let's start today's lecture so the topics for this particular lecture is uh, the topics for this particular uh, session or this particular lecture are listed over here we are going to start with our last module module number 6 that is undecidability this module is all about certain type of problems which we can't even solve using a turing machine so what exactly happened in the last lecture we saw that we can construct a universal turing machine a universal turing machine is basically a turing machine which is capable of mimicking or which is capable of enacting any other turing machine or any other computer logic we saw that if we feed in the proper uh, program if we feed in the proper input and the states uh, with the help of the three tapes we can create a universal turing machine yes or no that was the last topic of yesterday's lecture or that was the last topic of the previous video okay so we saw that we can construct a universal turing machine with the help of three tapes by providing the inputs by providing the moves and pro by providing the states so even the universal turing machine is not capable of solving certain set of problems these problems give rise to this concept which is what we call as undecidability or we can even call that as unsolvability so unsolvability is basically a concept where we will uh, come across certain type of problems which cannot be solved in finite amount of time this is what we had done in the previous lecture also in the previous video also we saw that uh, there are certain problems which will not halt by either giving guess as output or no as output those problems which do not halt in finite amount of time are called as unsolvable problems or undecidable problems am i clear do let me know uh if you are clear with this topic then we will come to uh, a conclusion that you have got the basic understanding of what exactly is unsolvability and what exactly is halting if you remember once again i will let you know halting can either be accept or reject that is a machine or in short a turing machine will come to a halt if it gives yes as output or no as output it can't loop forever but if we are having certain set of problems which cannot be solved in finite amount of time then the turing machine will loop forever continuously and that is what and that is what we call as undecidability so for certain type of problems even the turing machine fails miserably those type of problems are called as unsolvable problems or undecidable problems we are going to start off with this module it will hardly take two or three lectures i am uh, sure we are going to cover this by tomorrow in our syllabus also this uh, module is given a uh, 3 hours weightage so we will be completing your syllabus by tomorrow and then we can start with revisions from the next week okay so just have a look at the topics over here these are the topics which are to be covered first topic is recursive and recursively enumerable languages these are certain classes of languages we are going to learn about them we are going to solve few examples based on them and then we will be starting with the halting problem of a turing machine these are the topics which are to be covered today and the rest topics are to be done tomorrow if time for if time permits okay so let's start with the very first topic which is recursive and recursively enumerable languages so we'll learn what exactly are recursive languages and recursively enumerable languages over here uh, this entire module is theoretical but as you know Uh, we haven't uh, had a single lecture where it was only about theory topics we are having even a single problem even if we are having a single problem in a lecture uh, i just want to say that koi bhi aisa lecture hua nahi jisme sirf theory problems hue ho we have come across all the lectures so far there has uh, never been a single lecture which was all about theory okay so the same will uh, happen over here also we will be having certain theory and a corresponding example for that particular theoretical part the same will happen over here also right so we are going to start with the very first topic that is recursive and recursively enumerable languages okay we'll learn about what exactly is a recursive language and what exactly is a recursively enumerable language is it visible okay so first thing is what is a recursive language a recursive language is basically also called as a 
Turing decidable language. As you can see, I have highlighted the definitions over here. A recursive language is also called as a Turing decidable language. And on the other hand, a recursively enumerable language is also called as Turing acceptable language. Now, what are these two things? Let me clarify the uh, terms over here. I'm starting with a recursively enumerable language over here. As you can see, the following statements are equivalent. I can say that any language L, if any language L is Turing acceptable, then that language is also recursively enumerable. Now, what are these things? I will come back to it. For the time being, just understand it like this, that if a language is Turing acceptable, then that language will be also recursively enumerable. In the similar fashion, I can say that if a language L is Turing decidable, then I can say that particular language is also recursive. Similarly, if it is Turing decidable, it simply means that we can also create an algorithm for recognizing the language L. Am I clear with this part? Just have a look. Turing acceptable and Turing decidable are two things. Turing acceptable may lead uh, may uh, give rise to a halting problem situation where it is undecidable. So I can write over here, Turing acceptable might be undecidable in nature, whereas Turing decidable is obviously decidable in nature. So what happens is we can't create an algorithm or a program for Turing acceptable or recursively enumerable languages, whereas we can create an algorithm or a program for recursive languages. Are you getting the difference? So we can simply create a universal Turing machine for this, and we can't create a universal Turing machine for this. Is this concept clear? Basically, Turing acceptable is nothing but the inputs will be accepted by the Turing machine. But we may go into a loop forever in the case of Turing acceptable machines. But in the case of Turing decidable, as the name suggests, we will definitely come to a state which will halt the Turing machine at some point of time after some finite amount of time. That is why we can create a universal Turing machine for a recursive language. Whereas we can't create a universal Turing machine for a recursively enumerable language. Am I clear with this concept? Do let me know, please. OK. What about others? Are you understanding this topic? OK. So this is just the introduction of what exactly is a Turing acceptable language and a Turing decidable language. So don't get confused. Again, see over here, a Turing acceptable language is a recursively enumerable language, whereas a Turing decidable language is a recursive language. Yeah. OK, so let's see the definitions of what exactly is Turing acceptable and what exactly is Turing decidable. So I'm starting off with Turing acceptable languages. Turing acceptable language is a language which is made up of all the combinations of the alphabet. Over here, this symbol is nothing but it signifies that language L is made up of all the combinations of the alphabet. That is alphabet star. Just give me one second. Uh, am I audible? There was some network glitch from my side. OK, fine. Thank you. So uh, I'm again restarting this concept, Turing acceptable language. A Turing acceptable language can be defined as a language L, which is made up of any combinations of the alphabet. We all know that epsilon closure, sorry, uh, alphabet closure is nothing but all the possible combinations of that alphabet. If we write A closure, it simply means all the possible values of A, including even A raised to 0. So, so the same happens over here. A language L belongs to, or I can say a language L, which is made up of all the combinations of the alphabet, is said to be a Turing acceptable language if there is a Turing machine M, which halts on every word belonging to L. 
with an answer yes so just consider an example there is a language okay there is a word and there is this alphabet alphabet is nothing but it can be a comma b we are making a language out of it for example a b a a triple a this is a language and the condition is such that a language l which is made up of any combinations of a and b this is made up of any combinations of a and b is said to be a turing acceptable language if there is a turing machine m hypothetically which holds on every w which belongs to l so w could be a word which belongs to these three words or this particular set of language so i can say that let's consider w to be aa so if w belongs to a uh, l i can say that now w is aa and aa belongs to this set so this condition is satisfied okay so if this condition is satisfied then the turing machine will halt with an answer yes otherwise if w doesn't belong to l let's consider w is equal to ba now ba is not part of l so if anything like that happens then the uh, turing machine will not halt and loop forever am i clear is this uh, concept clear now we are discussing what exactly is a turing acceptable language so i have taken few examples to make you understand what exactly is this let me go through the definition once again the definition is like this a language l which is made up of or composed of all the combinations or any combinations of the alphabet is said to be a turing acceptable language if there is a turing machine m which holds on every word belongs to l for example if all the words belong to l then the turing machine will halt with yes otherwise if any of the words don't belong to l then we may say that the turing machine may not halt and it will loop forever am i clear is this clear do let me know so i can say that such a language is recursively enumerable language such a language l will be a recursively enumerable language come on give me feedback is it clear do you understand how to do it what it is exactly okay okay fine thank you so this is what we call as a recursively enumerable language or a turing acceptable language so basically kya ho raha hai if the string w belongs to l then the turing machine will halt by uh, giving an output yes but what about the conditions where we should get an output no it doesn't satisfy that it doesn't address to that situations that's why we uh, are looking towards the next concept which is called as turing decidable language now a turing decidable language will address the problems which might be faced in the above how so have a look this is all about turing decidable language a language l which is made up of all the combinations or any combinations of the alphabet is said to be a turing decidable language if there is a turing machine m which holds on every w belonging to l with yes and if w doesn't belong to l then m will halt with no so did you understand the difference in this case this particular machine will halt irrespective if the answer is below if the string is belonging to l or not so it will halt every time so we can say that this sort of a machine is decidable in nature it will not go into a loop am i clear is the difference clear so the same thing it happens over here also but this is also addressing to the situations where the word or the string will not belong to l previous case mein kya ho raha tha what was happening in the previous cases we were not addressing the situations where the word will not belong to l in that case what would have happened the machine would have moved into an infinite loop without halting for those strings that don't belong to l so am i clear hence the turing decidable languages are also called as recursive languages are the concepts clear both of these this is just the beginning we are just starting with the uh, theoretical parts then we will move on to the problems okay do let me know if it's clear then i will move ahead okay okay thank you arish so 
let's see one more definition based on this this is very important these last two lines i can say that every turing decidable language have a look every turing decidable language is turing acceptable whereas every turing acceptable language need not be turing decidable is it clear just have a look at this venn diagram sort of thing so i can say that this is a turing decidable language and this is a turing acceptable language i can say that every turing decidable language is turing acceptable why so because this turing decidable language will either give yes or it will give no okay so what i can conclude that whichever tdls or whichever turing decidable languages are giving yes they will obviously be a part of turing acceptable languages yes or no because turing acceptable languages are only giving answers as yes they don't address to the nos am i clear so whichever turing decidable language is producing yes as an answer that is also a part of a turing acceptable language am i clear so i can say that every turing decidable language is turing acceptable whereas every turing acceptable language need not be turing decidable why so because as you can see turing acceptable languages kya honge turing acceptable languages will only provide answer as yes whereas turing decidable languages will also provide answers as no so jo no bachenge what about those or if i simplify this diagram okay just to make you understand i can draw it like this somewhat like this but this part is only giving yes this part is for no so i can say that this is a turing acceptable language this entire white circle is a turing decidable language now i guess this should make the things clear agar pehle confusion ho raha tha if it was slightly confusing the if the previous diagram was slightly confusing just have a look at this i can say that all the turing decidable languages which are yes are also turing acceptable language yes or no is this diagram clear now yes or no similarly all the turing acceptable languages which are yes in nature are obviously part of this turing decidable but what about these jo no dikh rahe what about these no ones these are the turing decidable languages which are not part of this turing acceptable language am i clear because kya hoga no dega ya to yes dega clear so just have a look over here once again i am repeating this concept recursively enumerable language and recursively rec and recursive languages this needs to be cleared once again a turing acceptable language or a recursively enumerable language will only halt with yes it will not halt with no so these sort of machines may go into an infinite loop am i clear whereas the machine over here the second type of machine it will halt every single time whether the answer is yes or the answer is no so there is no scope of infinite loops is it clear now the concept is clear i hope so so shall i move ahead with the next topic shall i move ahead with the problems do let me know don't get confused turing acceptable languages are also called as recursively enumerable languages whereas turing decidable languages are called as recursive languages okay what about others shall i move ahead with the problems problems karenge to all clear ho jayega okay so let's start with the very first problem let's have a look at the problem and then i guess this will be much clear to you to understand okay so the first problem goes like this let me zoom it show that for two 
recursive languages whenever you are reading the question read it properly because these are the uh, fundamental things over here show that for two recursive languages now if i want to ask you what is a recursive language what will be the answer recursive languages are turing decidable or turing undecidable you only let me know we are talking about recursive languages so what are those turing uh, turing decidable or turing acceptable i can also call it turing undecidable alag alag naam ho sakte hain this entire concept is some, somewhat confusing so pay attention properly whenever i'm saying recursive languages what are those are they turing decidable or turing acceptable just now we had seen just write in the chat box let me know turing decidable correct so whenever we are saying that recursive languages discuss karne hai whenever we are saying that the question in context is a recursive language then we are talking about turing decidable languages be crystal clear with that okay so let's start with this problem show that for two recursive languages l1 and l2 each of the following is recursive now recursive kab hoga jab wo decidable hoga it's straight it's straight forward simple as that it will be recursive when it will be decidable clear cut matlab the machine should halt that's it if the machine is halting whether it is yes or no it doesn't matter if the machine is halting then it is turing decidable and if it is turing decidable it is clearly recursive simple okay so let's uh, take these conditions take these uh, questions the first one is there are two languages l1 and l2 both are recursive in nature we have to prove l1 union l2 to be recursive we have to show whether l1 union l2 is recursive or not so how to start it it's very simple first of all we need to consider two turing machines m1 and m2 diagram bhi dekho uh, side by side if m1 is deciding l1 so what basically we are doing m1 is considering l1 and m2 is considering l2 it simply means m1 is a turing machine which is addressing to the language l1 and m2 is a turing machine which is addressing to the language l2 now you only tell me if a word w belongs to l1 then what will happen whatever we had studied just now try to apply it over here come on try to apply the concept over here if a word w belongs to l1 what will happen everything is mentioned over here correct it will give yes why yes because just as we had studied right now in the introductory part that if the word belongs to the language then the turing machine will halt with an answer yes similarly if w doesn't belong to l or l1 in this case it will simply give an output no am i clear but in this case we are assuming that w belongs to l1 then m1 will return yes or y similarly if the word w belongs to l2 then m2 would return yes or y otherwise no clear with this so let's move ahead what is next is output of m1 is written on the tape of m3 now we can see that we have introduced one more turing machine m3 over here all these boxes are turing machines okay so what we are doing is the output of m1 over here is written into the output of m3 now uh, input of m3 or the tapes of m3 similarly the output of m2 is also given as input to m3 now what will happen m3 will have to produce some sort of result now what are those results just have a look the machine m3 returns yes as output if at least one of the outputs of m1 or m2 is yes why is this happening can any one of you tell me focus on this particular statement the machine m3 returns y as the output if at least one of the outputs of m1 or m2 is yes why is it happening so 
Any answers? Correct. Because question is union. We are talking about union. So depending upon the question, these conditions will vary. Very good answer. So what exactly happens is, in union as we know, that if either of the conditions are present, then the answer will be 1 in Boolean terms. Right? Same will happen over here. If either L1 is giving output as yes, or if L2 is giving output as yes. In this term, uh, we are discussing about M1 and M2, that is machines M1 and M2. So suppose the machine M1 is giving output as yes, and M2 is giving output as no, then also the output of M3 will be yes. Am I clear? Because ha, it's uh, basically an OR operation. So I if, if M1 is yes, or M2 is no, then also the answer is yes. Am I clear? That is what is mentioned over here. But what will be the situation if M1 is also giving output as no? In that case, as we know, in union, only uh, if both the outputs are giving zeros or if both the outputs are giving no, then only the output will be a no. Right? Am I clear? Otherwise, every time it is 1. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Let me write it properly. It is basically L1, L2, and L1 union L2. So it is nothing but only this will be 0, everything else will be 1. Basic maths, right? So the same applies over here. So if both of them are no, then only the machine will give answer as no. Otherwise, at every instance, it will give an answer as yes. Now, you only tell me whether the machine will halt or not. Whether the machine will halt or not. Consider all the four conditions. Consider all these four values. It will be a no. It will be a yes, yes, and yes. So I'm saying this is M3. OK. So these are the various possibilities of M3. It will either give no in one of the instances, and in three instances, it will give yes as the output. So now you only tell me whether the machine M3 will halt eventually or not. Come on, quick. It's simple enough. Just have a look at these conditions and give me the answer. Yes, it will halt according to Siddhi. What about others? It will halt, OK. I hope you got the understanding. I hope you got the reasons why it will halt or it will not halt. Others kindly kitchen your answers quickly. The man is saying it will halt. What about others? I guess you are fine. I guess the others are finding it tricky to understand or not what I'm not able to understand right now. Kindly let me know if you are uh, finding it tricky to absorb or if you're having the understanding of the concepts, then it will make the things really easy for you to understand. What about others? I'm only getting answers from three of them. It will halt or not halt? Simple question. I have given the answer. I have given the diagram in front of you. I have drawn the table for you. The table is not required still. I have drawn it. Try to understand from that and give me the answer. As simple as that. Only three of you have answered yet. Right now. Four. Avoid. OK. Only five. So I'm assuming for the others, it, it is not halting. Only for five of you, the answer is halting. And for the rest of you, the answer is not halting. Simple. OK, now make it six. So those who have not given the answers, now you only tell me why you think it is not halting. Abhi sab ke answers are OK, so the answer obviously is it will halt. Try to understand this concept once again. Whether the output is yes or no, I have repeated it n number of times. Whether the output is yes or no, it doesn't matter. It should give an output. It should not loop forever. The same thing is mentioned over here. Just have a look. 
it should be clear that m3 decides l1 union l2 as both l1 and l2 are turing decidable so after a finite amount of time both m1 and m2 will halt with either yes or no it doesn't matter hence the machine m3 gets activated after both m1 and m2 halts m1 and m2 halt kab hoga when will m1 and m2 halt whenever they will get the proper inputs in the form of l1 and l2 they will give give they will give some sort of output as yes or no and once they give the output as yes or no m1 and m2 will halt and once m1 and m2 halts obviously they are linked to m3 hence m3 will also halt accordingly that is what is written over here the machine m3 will halt with y if w belongs to l1 or w belongs to l2 dono mein se kuch bhi ho either of them is possible else m3 will halt with n so if the output of even if the output of m3 is yes or no it doesn't matter it will halt eventually after a finite amount of time that was the question that's it does l1 union l2 is turing decidable or we can say that l1 union l2 is recursive in nature am i clear do let me know your feedback if this concept is clear or not shall i move ahead with the next problem yes sir clear okay so next is you simply take this condition no need to write the theory part second condition is l1 union l uh, intersection l2 now what will happen in the case of intersection let me draw the table you know what is the answer 0 0 1 1 are you only tell me what will be the answer both of them have to be one right in the case of intersection so it will be one over here otherwise everywhere it will be a zero correct if both of them are yes then only the answer will be a yes otherwise it will not be a yes so i can take the uh, same diagram over here m1 and m2 i am giving inputs as l1 and l2 take the same diagram okay i am assuming that these are part of w because w has to be compared with these so if m1 is giving output as yes and if m2 is giving output as no okay these are then fed into m3 what will be the output of m3 obviously it is clear from the above diagram that if one of them is yes and the other is no it will give answer as no clear similarly if i convert this into yes yes then the answer will be yes right it's simple boolean uh, maths nothing else boolean algebra whatever you want to call it the same thing happens over here if we are giving answer as uh, if one of them is yes and the other one is no then obviously the machine will give an output as no but what about the halting whether it will halt or not Kindly let me. It will halt. Why so? The same concept. I have repeated it n number of times. Whether it is uh, no or yes as the output, it simply means that the machine is now deciding some sort of an output. If the output is decidable in nature, if the language is decidable in nature, then the machine will definitely halt. So in this case, we come to a conclusion that even if it is L1 union L2 or L1 intersection L2, it is going to halt. clear with this any confusions so far do let me know okay clear so based on the uh, based on these uh, definitions let's try out the next one which is l1 dash or basically a complement of l1 so now we are having only a single machine single language how to address this situation it is very simple what we need to do is we have this machine m1 okay we will uh, simply straight forward answer is there we will uh, simply send uh, some w okay we will check whether this w is uh, part of this alphabet or not 
सब में भी वही है सिंटैक्स ओवर दर दैट डब्ल्यू बिलोंग्स टू एल्फाबेट क्लोजर अब वॉट हैपन्स इज this will give uh, will be given as input to m1 and based on the conditions whether this w belongs to l or not it will give some output yes or no if w belongs to l or in this case l1 the answer will be yes if w doesn't belong to l1 the answer will be no it's straight forward so whatever be the answer over here let's consider if it is yes that will be given as input to your machine m2 and that will convert it in short i will say that will invert it or take a complement of this yes and give answer as no am i clear so basically this is an inverter whatever be the input the corresponding uh, what you can say the inverted values will be the answer am i clear so m2 is getting input as yes so it will give output as no similarly if i give input as no the answer will be yes so whatever be the output whether it is yes or no machine is going to halt so in short i can say after computing all these three of uh, sub questions a b and c i come to a conclusion that all these sub questions a b and c are recursive languages or i can say that these languages are turing decidable in nature am i clear this comes for 10 marks so first of all you will have to explain the theory and the, if uh, this problem is asked that will be uh, again for 10 marks am i clear so even if you have the uh, problem in hand you have to solve it with you have to write the answer with theory also any doubts any doubts regarding this particular problem if you are having so kindly let me know we have completed half the portion for today's lecture uh, one more topic is left that is halting problem okay so if you are uh, comfortable with this kindly let me know then we will do one more problem and start with halting problem okay fine so let's start with one more problem and then we will see what exactly is the halting problem of turing machines let's consider this problem number 2 if l1 and l2 are two recursive languages so it's mentioned again clearly that l1 and l2 are recursive languages if l is defined as w now what is w w is in l1 and not in l2 or w is in l2 and not in l1 it's straight forward there are two languages l1 and l2 and it is defined the language l is defined as w where the condition is w must belong to l1 and not in l2 or w must belong to l2 and not in l1 so if it is present in l1 it should not be present in l2 and vice versa am i clear this is the problem now you have to prove or disprove whether l is recursive or not when it will be recursive if the machine is halting simple if the machine doesn't halt then it is recursively enumerable am i clear how to start this problem how to design the framework for this problem any idea how many turing machines would be there first of all tell me that we'll start with the turing machine count how many turing machines will be there simple straight forward question 3 okay 3 correct same thing similar thing we had seen above in the previous problem we are going to have uh, first of all two turing machines m1 and m2 and their corresponding outputs will be sent to this turing machine m3 right so what exactly happens is we are giving two inputs one input to m1 and the other input to m2 and this is your w now this w belongs to your alphabet closure any combination of the alphabets now what happens is output of machine m1 is written on tape m3 the similar fashion output of machine m2 is written on tape of machine m3 what happens is let the turing machine m1 decide l1 and let the turing machine m2 decide l2 so i'm writing it over here this is for l1 and this is for l2 now what happens if this word w belongs to l1 
then machine M1 will, M1 will give output as yes. Similarly, if this W belongs to L2, M2 will also give an output as yes. This is one of the scenarios. So now you only tell me what will be the output of M3. It's similar to a combination of circuits. Digital logic design, similar to that. Okay, so we are having these three gates, for example, AND gate, NAND gate, NOR gate, similar to that. That's why we can say that uh, Turing machines try to mimic the modern day computers because we can do n number of calculations or computations based on Turing machines. Is it clear now? So now you only have a look. M1 is giving an output as yes. M2 is giving an output as yes. What was my question? My question was something like this. We are going to accept all the languages which are basically the first, uh, if it is W, then we are assuming that W is in L1 and W is not in L2. But in this case, both of them are belonging to L1 as well as L2. So is it acceptable? Yes or no? The conditions have to be satisfied. W should either belong to L1 or it should belong to L2 or vice versa. But in this case, what is happening, it is belonging to both L1 as well as L2. So what will be the output of M3? No, correct. In this case, the output of M3 will be no. Am I clear? Simple here, right? Like an XOR, yeah, we can say like that. So similar to this, now if I assume that W doesn't belong to L2, so one of them is yes and the other one is no. In such a case, the output will be yes. Am I correct? The output will be yes. Why so? Just refer the condition. In the condition, it was mentioned that W is in L1 and not in L2. That is mentioned, that is clear over here. Then the output should be yes. Similarly, if I invert it, if I write it like this, if I write a no over here and a yes over here, then my condition 2 is getting satisfied because there's an orb in between. So if, I, if I'm satisfying this or even this, then also the machine should halt giving in yes as an answer. That is W is in L2, yes, correct. And W is not in L1, that is also correct. In that case also, we will get answer as yes. So as you can see, my machine M3 is capable of giving no as well as yes. So what I can conclude from this, you only tell me. What can I conclude from this? It's similar to your previous problem. From all these definitions, what can I conclude? What is your conclusion? What is your inference? Is the machine recursive? Sorry, is the language recursive or recursively enumerable? That is the question. Come on, quickly give me answers. Simple, straightforward question is the machine recursive or not? Try to correlate once again. Don't confuse recursive and recursively enumerable languages. These have to be by hearted. You must know what is the difference between recursive and recursively enumerable. Simple, straightforward. If the machine is halting, then it will be recursive. In this case, the machine is halting. Yes or no? If it is giving no as well as yes, both as the output, then the machine is halting. Simple, straightforward question. If it is only giving yes and it is not considering the no values, then it will loop forever. In that case, it will be a recursively enumerable language. But in this case, it is giving both the answers. It is halting for yes as well as for no. Hence, it is a recursive language in nature. Clear? So we can say that it is proved that this particular language is recursive. Essay questions here at the exam. Clear? So if this is clear, I can start with the last topic of the day, which is halting problem. Yes, correct. The answer is recursive. So let's start with the last problem. Uh, the most confusing of the lot, which is called a halting problem. First, read the definition properly. Halting problem of a Turing machine. Given a Turing machine M and an input W to the machine M, determine if the machine M will eventually halt when it is given the input W. The statement is very simple. 
but the solution is somewhat confusing i'll try to make it understand make you understand so uh, basically what happens is given a turing machine m we are trying to find out uh, if there is a turing machine m and if there is an input w whether the machine m will eventually stop or eventually halt for that input w or not this is our problem statement is it clear so we are basically trying to find out whether any given turing machine will halt for an input w in a finite amount of time or not if it halts then there is no problem of halting halting problem hai nahi fir it is straight away a recursive uh, recursive language but if we are unable to find the condition where the machine is halting then it gives rise to this halting problem then the machine will move into a loop forever and we won't be able to halt that machine for that input w am i clear this is our problem statement so to solve this we need some sort of assumptions the very first assumption is like this we are assuming that whatever turing machines are being used in this uh, solution whichever is going to be used in the solution they are having inputs in the form of 0 and 1 only just to keep it simple we are only considering the inputs in the form of 0 and 1 whatever inputs are given to the machine they will be in binary format only okay so it will be a combination of 0 1 1 0 whatever a long string of zeros and ones is only possible nothing other than that is possible clear this is our first assumption second assumption is we are solving the halting problem of a turing machine with the help of the method of contradiction if you remember we have already seen the method of contradiction in pumping lemma am i clear i hope you remember what was pumping lemma we had seen in pumping lemma that we had initially assumed that the language is regular then uh, with all the calculations we came to know that the machine sorry that the language is contradicting the above statements and hence by the method of contradiction we came to a conclusion that so and so language is not regular am i clear same concept is going to be used over here we are going to start with the first assumption that initially the uh, turing machine is solvable and then we will come to know then we will conclude through a series of steps that this particular statement is contradicting what i had assumed earlier and then only i will come to know that this machine is unsolvable or undecidable so initially we are assuming that the turing machine problem is solvable clear am i clear till here we are just starting with this solution so do let me know if this first two assumptions are clear to you first assumption is we are sending all the inputs in the form of binary numbers second assumption is we are going to solve it with the help of contradiction clear okay so let's start with this problem let us assume that the halting problem of a turing machine is solvable there exists a machine h1 h1 takes two inputs a string describing m m kya hai m is the turing machine i'm writing it over here m is a turing machine and w is nothing but the input so as explained we are going to consider all the inputs in the form of binary numbers so we are assuming that that there exists a turing machine h1 which takes two inputs first input is a string which describes m i can say that the string could be 100111 this could be a string which describes m Sim similarly the second input will be an input w so w is now the actual word it can be 011011 whatever the length is not mattering over here we just want to see the input and output for uh, saving time and for saving complexity we are assuming that the length are equal okay now it's fine so uh, this is how it looks step number 1 we are assuming that there is a turing machine h1 which takes two inputs first is the description of turing machine m and second is the input w that is a string am i clear till here what will happen is h1 will generate an output of halt if h1 determines that this particular machine m stops on input w is this concept clear i am repeating once again h1 generates an output halt if h1 determines 
that the Turing machine M stops on input W. मतलब क्या? If W is the input and if that input is given to M, if M halts, then H1 will give output as halt. Am I clear? Internally, this is how it works. H1 is a Turing machine that we have assumed. M is already a Turing machine in uh, question. So what we want to do is we are assuming that this Turing machine H1 will give an output of halt if H1 anyhow determines that M will stop or M will halt on this input W. Otherwise, H1 will give an output loop. Is it clear? Jan se dekho question one second. Samjha ye. So internally what happens? H1 ke andar wapas se aisa kuch M hoga jismein aapko W diya jayega. It will either say yes or it will say no. That we have already seen so far. Yes or no? Just let me know. H1 is nothing but the outer box. Inside that there is an M. This is nothing but this M only. This W will be given to this M. This machine M will give some output either yes or no. Depending upon that, this H1 will decide whether its output will be halt or loop. Is it clear now? I'm not showing the internal structures for each of these uh, Turing machines, but this is how the internal things work. Clear with this? I hope so. Do let me know quickly. We are having 10 minutes more. Okay, so shall I move ahead? So I can conclude uh, this particular steps, uh, step like this, that if M stops or if M halts on W, this H1 will give output as halt. But if M doesn't halt on W, then H1 will give output as loop. Clear? Next up, what we are going to do is, we are going to revise this machine H1 as H2. And now what we will do is, we will take both the inputs of H2 as M. Just have a look. This is where the confusion creeps in. What we are doing now is, we are providing both the inputs to H2 as M only. This is where all the confusion creeps in. This is why these languages are called recursive in nature or recursively enumerable in nature. So keep things simple. As I had told you earlier that all these inputs are nothing but in the form of binary numbers. So H2 can take both the inputs as the same values. Yes or no? I can simply say that M is nothing but 0, 1, 1, 0. I can simply send the same value over here. Yes or no? We are simply considering the inputs to be in the form of binary numbers. So in short, I can simply say that H2 is nothing but a Turing machine which accepts the same inputs, same binary numbers from both the inputs. Can I say so? Yes or no? Come on quickly, let me know. Give your feedbacks. These are all assumptions. Okay. So for the time being, we are assuming that let us revise the machine H1 as H2 to take M as both the inputs. And now H2 should be able to determine if M will halt on M as its input or not. Okay. Just have a look now. What the problem is all about. We are now sending the same inputs through both the input channels. Okay. Now we will uh, see whether H2 will halt on these inputs or not. It's quite similar to your previous problem, previous uh, diagram. The previous diagram was having two inputs, M and W. And depending upon that, we came to a conclusion whether the machine will halt or loop. Similar to this, we are uh, now changing the inputs to the same inputs from both the channels. So now I'm giving M only as the input to H2. And depending upon that, we will see whether H2 will produce halt as the output or loop as the output. Am I clear? It's simple and straightforward. Nothing uh, rocket science over here. Is it fine? Shall I move ahead? There are four steps total. We have completed two steps. OK, come on. Uh, let me know if this is clear, the first two steps. Yes or no? OK, clear. So the third step is somewhat like this. What we are doing is, let us now construct a new Turing machine, H3. You will come to know why we are doing all of these things. 
one by one. Let us now construct a new Turing machine H3 that takes the output of H2 as its input and does the following. What it does is, we are creating a new Turing machine H3 which will take the output of the previous Turing machine H2. So all of these are linked. What happens is, if the input to H3 is halt, then the output will be inverted. That is, if the input is halt, then the output will be loop. And if the input is loop, then the output will be halt. Clear? So this is our third Turing machine H3. Now you will ask me why we are doing all of these things over here. Let me come to the fourth point and this will make things clear. Okay. So basically what is happening, H3 is now adding some sort of ambiguity that if H2 is halting, H3 should loop forever. And if H2 is looping forever, H3 should halt. Both of these machines are exactly inverts of each other. Whatever H2 gives us output, H3 will give the exact invert of that output. Am I clear? This was your step three. Now let's come to the final step, step number four. Step number four is quite similar to your step number two. Over here, what we are doing is we are considering the same Turing machine H3 only, but this time we are giving the input as H3 only to the machine H3. Try to understand this, what I'm doing. Whatever output you got in step number four, the same output is again fed back over here. Am I clear? This diagram is slightly similar to that only. What we are trying to do is, whatever was the output of H3, that output is again sent as input to H3. Am I clear? Come on, have a look at this diagram and tell me whether it's clear or not. So this time, what will happen? If I take this output, it is loop. And if I take this output, it is halt. Correct? Yes or no? So far. So what exactly happens is, if I take the same output and feed it again over here, then what will happen? I am sending H3 as input to H3. But what happens is, if the input is loop, the output is halt. And if the input is halt, the output is loop. Is it possible? You only tell me. Have a look at this carefully. This is the most crucial step. If you are able to decipher it, the entire things will be clear. Are you clear with step three? In step three, whatever output we got, we are sending the same output again as a feedback to H3. Am I clear? So what I am doing is I am looping over here as the first input and I am sending halt as the second input. So for loop, it will halt and for halt, it will loop. Is it possible or is it ambiguous? Come on, give me your answers. Is it possible scientifically? Very clear. Just have a look. If I say that H3 is looping, if I say that H3 is looping, then it is already looping. How can it halt? Am I clear? If I say that H3 is already looping forever, how can it halt? And similarly, if I say that if H3 is halting, then how can it loop forever? Both are contradictory, yes or no? Yes, only one of you are answering. What about others? I hope you are getting this concept. I am sending the same input to H3. Okay, so if I am already saying that H3 is looping, then it will loop forever. It can't halt. And if I am saying that H3 is already halting, it has halted. How can it loop forever? Am I clear? So that is what is the contradiction part over here. So if I say that H3 halts on H3 as input, then H3 would loop. This is the most confusing thing. 
if h3 holds on h3 as input then h3 would loop nothing else i have written the same thing from the diagram similarly if h3 loops forever on h3 as input then h3 would halt this is the most contradictory statement you will ever face you will ever come to uh, you will uh, you will come to encounter in tcs that if h3 halts on h3 as input then h3 would loop forever and if h3 loops forever on h3 as input then h3 would halt this doesn't make any sense hence in either case the result is wrong hence h3 does not exist and if h3 does not exist there is no uh, consequence or there is no significance of h2 because what happens is we are sending the output of h2 to h3 so if h3 does not exist what is the role of h2 so that is why h2 will also not exist and if h2 doesn't exist then what is the significance of h1 it has no significance and hence we can say if h2 does not exist h1 will also cease to exist and hence h1 also doesn't exist so in short we can say that any such problem does not exist and if it exists then it will be a it will be a total case of halting problem that is it will either keep on loop forever or we will have no co uh, concrete solution to that problem hence it is called as undecidable in nature am i clear although it's uh, it is quite confusing but try to read all the statements properly try to uh, uh, correlate it with the diagrams i have given to you and then you will come to know what exactly is the problem or what exactly is the undecidability nature of this problem so it's all about assumption making assumptions that's it so initially we had made some assumption and we are contradicting our assumptions towards the end that is what all these questions are all about pumping lemma you had seen the same thing happens over here initially you assumed that some sort of uh, language is regular but towards the end you came to know that you are contradicting your assumptions and hence you concluded that such language is not regular same thing happens over here initially you had assumed that your language is solvable or decidable in nature but towards the end you came to know that such problem doesn't exist and such problem cannot be solved in finite amount of time hence such problem is undecidable in nature that is what we call as halting problem of a turing machine i hope i was able to uh, make you understand all these concepts